Good afternoon and thank you for joining me today for another program that is part of our online exhibit, Natural Framing, the Life and Work of Frank D. Morimoto. I am uh, very excited to be joined today by Mr. John Hopper. Uh, John is the director of the Amachi Preservation Society located in Granada, Colorado. Uh, John is also the Dean of Students, counselor and teacher at Grenada High School in uh, Grenada, Colorado. Uh, the Amachi Preservation Society was established in 1993. Amachi is also maintained by volunteer students from the school, as well as the collaborative efforts from the other organizations that support the Amachi Preservation Society. Amachi was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in May of 1994. It was designated as an historic landmark in December of 2006. And Amachi Preservation was designated Preserve America Stewards of Amachi by the White House in the spring of 2014. Amachi also produces a newsletter and maintains a museum in downtown Grenada, Colorado, all of which are student maintained along with the Amachi Preservation Society. Welcome, John, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thanks for having me. So, um, I guess we uh, will start with a presentation on uh, kind of the history of, of Machi. Um, first uh, and for, uh, foremost, that understand that this is a student-run organization, um, and Grenada High School continues to uh, keep, keep uh, Machi going and running and um, running the museum. Uh, we've slowed down in COVID times, as you can tell, we're on a virtual presentation anymore. But uh, we are still open for visitors by demand. Uh, if you call us, um, we will unlock the museum for you. Uh, we will have to leave, but we can unlock it for you. You can run through it. So other than that, that's uh, we can go right into the presentation if that's all right with you. Okay, and can you share the website for the Amachi Preservation Society with the viewers? Yeah, our, our website is uh, amachi.org uh, is our website. On that website, we'll have all the contact information, amachi.org, um, uh, well, amachi.org. Um, it has all our information and uh, photos and driving tours. If you, if you show up in Grenada and want to see Amachi, the uh, driving tour will lead you through Amachi to, uh, from sign to sign. Uh, there's also a map you can download on the, off that website as well. And we have a lot of people that actually uh, use that driving tour because you can see the tracks of everybody going to each sign and stopping. So that's a very popular. To get in the museum, you will have to call us. Normally, we're open all the time. Now you have to call us. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I will um, let you proceed. You got it. Thanks. All right. Well, so from kind of real quick history of uh, Amachi, which is um, it's, we're working on becoming a full National Park Service site. And one of the there's four criteria uh, to become a national park. And one of the most, uh, one of the, the biggest criteria is, is are you nationally significant and what's unique about you? And uh, so to set ourselves off from the other 10 confinement centers, because there were 10 of these um, centers around the United States, this, this is the only one in the state of Colorado. But um, to set us uh, set us off, you know, we have we've developed a uh, a program that that kind of we go over the general what happened in the 1940s and then the differences between uh, Amachi uh, with the rest of the confinement centers. So that's this first slide. To be honest with you, uh, number one, uh, the government term uh, term for uh, this site is actually the Grenada Relocation camp. Um, but uh, soon after it opened, the 
problem quickly uh, developed between uh, mail, mail, uh, the mail carrier service. Uh, the town of Grenada, there's about 550 residents at the time, and then the Grenada relocation camp. Back in the 1940s, they didn't use zip codes. And uh, so the problem with the uh, mail service is uh, how do you separate town of Grenada mail between uh, with the Grenada relocation camp? So it was decided that they needed a post office at the Grenada relocation camp and it needed to have its own name. That name is going to be Amachi. And it was selected by the mayor of Lamar. He was no longer with us, and um, I still don't know why he selected Amachi. Uh, <clears throat> and for those who aren't uh, familiar with Amachi, Amachi Prowers, Amachi was actually um, married to John Prowers, which is our county seat, John Prowers. Um, they lived at Bogsville. Their house is still uh, there. Uh, Bogsville is a historic site itself. Amachi Prowers is buried in the Los Anima Cemetery in Bent County. Um, why he selected Amachi, um, maybe because, I mean, it's all speculation, maybe because John Prowers um, was the uh, name of the county seat and he wanted to pick Amachi. I, we don't know. Uh, it's just going to be one of those unsolved mysteries. But with that being stated, um, this, this uh, confinement center actually will now be called Amachi by everybody, and it still has that parenthesis name uh, in a lot of historical records as Amachi. And uh, as you know, it's kind of the irony of the whole situation. Amachi, uh, her father was actually killed at Sand Creek, at the Sand Creek Massacre, Chief, Chief Lone Bear. So he was actually killed there. Um, so it's a little, little bit of an irony to, uh, name a, uh, Japanese American confinement center with, uh, Native American woman whose father was killed at Sand Creek, uh, at the Sand Creek massacre. Just odd, odd, odd little, uh, scenario. So that, that's one of the uniqueness uh, aspects of, of Amachi, and that's why, uh, that's how Amachi got its name. It's because of the mail, and the mail was getting um, mixed up. This slide actually are, is the instructions for all Japanese Americans that were living on the West Coast. This would include Issei. These would be the Japanese Americans that were not allowed to have citizenship in the United States because they immigrated to the United States either prior to 1924, which uh, in 1924, there was a, an anti-Asian immigration act that was passed. And that's any, anybody that was from any Asian country was, um, it was, didn't, you couldn't, you couldn't become citizens. But as you know, as our constitution uh, reads, uh, if you're born in the United States, you become a U.S. citizen, and so a lot of the Issei, when they had children, uh, the second generation, which are the Nisei, uh, <clears throat> are going to be U.S. citizens. So that's anybody. That's why the instructions to this is this is the these are the instructions for a uh, the uh, Executive Order nine zero six six that was issued by uh, President Roosevelt. Um, that was passed on February 19th, which the 19th is coming up and all over the United States, at least in some communities, the February 19th is always, um, they always, we always have, a, they always have a ceremony and they do this year, a virtual sermon ceremony as well for um, people to understand what that executive order did to the Japanese Americans, which is Instructions to all Japanese uh, persons of Japanese ancestry living in these areas, which basically the West Coast, the entire West Coast, had to move, had to go, had to go inland. And there are going to be 10 of these confinement centers that are going to be set up within the United States. Only one in the state of Colorado. And the governor of the state of Colorado at that time was Governor Carr. 
And Governor Ralph Carr did not want, and because he didn't think it was right to have a uh, confinement center in the state of Colorado. Uh, he was going to be overruled by our uh, federal government and our federal uh, senators that were in and House members that were in the state at that time. And uh, Amachi will be uh, erected in southeastern Colorado. Now, there were two sites that were uh, selected. One was um, outside of Holyoke, Colorado, and then this one outside of Granada, Colorado. And this one was the one selected. We're not sh quite fully sure of why here, except that there is definitely no military uh, installations in the area. So that, that could be a large part of it. The other part of it is, it, is the, uh, the city of the town of Grenada, the city of Grenada, did not um, actually go out and petition for it, um, and I and I understand that the Holy Oak did, but so that could be another reason. But anyway, Ralph Ralph Carr thought it was wrong. Uh, what he will do, unlike any of the other Western governors, is he will invite the Japanese Americans to the state of Colorado, and he will actually end up hiring. Uh, several people out of Amachi to work as Banshee. And we actually have that correspondence of those those individuals that decided to work for uh, Governor Carr, left Amachi and went to Denver and worked for Governor Carr in the governor's mansion. So uh, to this day, uh, you know, uh, we, we look at uh, what Carr did as a uh, testament to uh, the protection of civil liberties within the United States. He, he thought it was wrong and uh, he, he did what he had to do. Now, he will lose his next election. Uh, he was actually running for a, a senator, not the governorship, but uh, Japanese Americans in the local uh, Amachi paper uh, often wrote that uh, because he stood up for them is one of the biggest reasons he lost that election. So they, uh, if you go to today, you go to uh, Sakura Square and uh, <clears throat> close to the uh, Buddhist temple in, in Denver, uh, they do have a bust and information of, of Ralph Carr there as well. So anyway, after 906, uh, Japanese Americans, about 121,000 Japanese Americans on the West Coast from California all the way to through uh, Washington will be relocated inland. And uh, they will do what they can on selling what they can. They'll, they'll have evacuation sales. Um, they will basically grab one bag per person and load up and come to uh, these different um, confinement centers. And then there you can see they're loading up on school buses there and they have luggage. We have actually in our museum, we actually have original luggage with the, the numbers that are going to be on them. These are these are the numbers that uh, they're, they were tagged with a uh, WRA War Relocation Authority number, and they were tagged as well as their luggage was tagged uh, with the same number, the same number. Many of these Japanese Americans are going to lose their farms, their businesses, um, their homes, and they're going to come to these centers for the next three plus years. Uh, Machi, uh, Amachi will be a um, open from, uh, understand the executive order 9066 is gonna uh, be issued on February 19th, 1942. Amachi will open August 27th of 1942. That's how quickly uh, it's going to uh, happen. And uh, in, as a matter of fact, uh, um, the Japanese Americans, the first ones that arrived, will actually end up uh, finishing Amachi. And we actually have uh, barrack uh, slabs that still have Amachi uh, Japanese American names of individuals that erected some of those. So, so we still have that graffiti. Also, just on the side note, Amachi is one of the most pristine of all 10 of these um, confinement centers that are still around and, and mainly because the city of Grenada purchased the land prior to 
I mean, right after it closed for the water. We still use Amachi water wells today for the, the uh, city of Grenada. Same wells. Soon after the Amachi, um, uh, Japanese Americans arrived at Amachi, they, they were given a loyalty questionnaire. This is an important questionnaire, and I'm hoping everybody can see, uh, see these. But uh, uh, question 27 and 28 had a, uh, a little bit of a controversy. So not to uh, go deep into this uh, conversation, but uh, Japanese Americans had to answer basically all these questions as yes. 98% of all Japanese Americans and their families said yes to all the questions. There was a small percentage, obviously, a small percentage that said no to number 27 and 28. 27, which uh, reads, um, are you willing to uh, fight for the United States um, in, the, in the military? Some of the Issei um, parents uh, didn't want their Nisei children to fight if they were behind uh, behind barbed wire with guard towers. They, they didn't think that was right. And in number twenty eight, uh, they basically they had to give up all rights to and and uh, to Japan and all allegiance to Japan, where uh, allegiance only to the United States, which is fine. And like I said, ninety eight percent of the people said yes to that, except. If you think about it, and these uh, some of the Issei uh, parents did think about it, it's um, we say yes to that, and for some reason you decide to go ahead and deport us because we're not American citizens. The Issei aren't, the Nisei were, but decide to deport us, uh, where are we going to go? Because we can't go back to Japan now and you know drop us off in the middle of the ocean, I don't know. But that is a policy um, of the United States. We will deport Japanese Americans back to Japan. And as a matter of fact, this letter is of an individual that ended up having to go back to Japan. Um, if you can see this, uh, this envelope, we have the whole letter with it, but we have the envelope. Uh, you can see the censor stamp, so that means somebody opened it up and read it. Uh, to censor anything that they thought was militarily significant. And it's addressed back to this individual, uh, to Amachi, Colorado. The person that wrote it um, was a, uh, which his family were going to be known as no-nos. No-nos are the people that said no, their family, family said no to number 27 and 28. No, no families, many of them, some of them, not all of them, uh, will end up being deported back to Japan. Now, Hamachi is a, a, another uh, significant uh, part other than these other confinement centers. And it happens to be this particular letter, which is a extremely rare cover letter, cover envelope, as well as the letter. In fact, the letter actually, uh, I don't think I have it, no. The letter actually states in the second paragraph, the very beginning, the individual that wrote this was um, like 16 years old, 17 years old, writing back to his high school friend who played football here. Um, it actually states stated uh, the censors will probably censor a lot of this letter even if it reaches you because he wrote it on the ship that was taking him back to Japan. And um, I couldn't speak very, he couldn't speak any Japanese, but. That's where he was headed with his family because they said no. Now, what happened is, and that's what this makes this letter extremely important. There were a handful of families that were no nos in Amachi. In fact, there were a lot of uh, other old families that tried to convince them to go ahead and say yes, uh, but the families refu these families refused. So they instead of uh, there, there was one confinement center on the west coast called Tule Lake. Tule Lake is where they sent all the no-no families. And from Tule Lake, then they would be deported out back to Japan, I think out of San Francisco Harbor, if I'm right, if I'm correct, out of San Francisco Harbor. Um, but if you look at this letter, it has a New York council stamp. So for a, for a while, I had no idea why would it have a New York council stamp on the letter if you're going to be deported out back to Japan 
And this individual, not only did he go to Japan, they had to go to Europe and then all the way around South Africa to get back to Japan with the family. So further research um, opened, opened the eyes. So there were a handful of no-no families. This ship, this is a Swedish ship, the MS Gypsum, were, was taking back Italian nationals and German nationals back to Europe. Still had room. U.S. government had room. Who else can we deport? Well, there were a handful of families here in Amachi they could deport. They put those families onto a train, three-day train ride to New York, put on the ship, went to Europe, dropped them off in Europe, the, the Germans and Italians, and then went all the way around South Africa to get back to uh, to get to um, Japan. So just for an update, this individual is still alive that wrote this letter, and the, the person that received the letter is also still alive. Um, um, the, the, the individual that wrote the letter is actually, he still uh, he lives in Gardena, California. He came back right after the war because um, he was a U.S. citizen, but he got deported. So that's the no-nos. Uh, the famous no-no family would be George Takei, uh, Commander Sulu off of uh, Star Trek. Some of you know that. That's why we have that there. We have emailed him. He has emailed us a couple times. Um, so his family was at Tule Lake, though. Now, they never really, they never got deported, but that's that's the way it goes. Uh, some people did, some people don't, they didn't. Secondly, uh, for a Machi standpoint, many of the fathers, like this individual in this in this photo, uh, this is the Hoshimea family, um, because he, he actually taught at Stanford, in Stanford, the university. He taught Japanese in Stanford. He was... Uh, well respected in the Japanese American community, so the government's going to deem him as a threat, and his family will end up at Amachi. He will end up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, in a detention center to be tried. He will be tried to to make sure that um, he's a good American, I guess, and. When he's found innocent, like everybody else that will be tried at Santa Fe, New Mexico, he got sent back to Amachi. And this is his reunion back with his wife at Amachi. This is reunion back uh, with his family, his daughters and son at, at Amachi. Happy ending for the Hoshimea family. For another family, though, the Kumi family, um, not, so, not so good. Um, he was a dentist and a Methodist minister. The Methodist minister is what got got him in trouble because, um, you know, ministers are well respected and can lead people. So he ended up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where he had a heart attack. Uh, back in the 40s, as you know, our medical uh, wasn't as sophisticated as it is now. Could They couldn't do much for him. They sent him back to Amachi. The day he got back to Amachi from Santa Fe, New Mexico, is the day he died. He died at Amachi. Um, and his family actually got special permission to actually take him back to California to bury him. I don't know why, except maybe a guilt factor there. I, I have no idea. Uh, the person that told us that story, um, she was six years old when she lost her father. Six years old. This is the uh, first train that arrived in Grenada, Colorado. Uh, with you got Lukey, Lukey Luz uh, coming in to uh, look at the Japanese Americans that were getting off of the train. Now, they were either the uh, uh, Amachi is only located is located only about half a mile outside of Grenada. So m many of them are going to end up walking to the uh, to Amachi. And, and if not, they were uh, taken there by uh, army truck, the uh, deuce and a half. Yep. Uh, town of Grenada at the time, uh, we were just coming out of the. Uh, a uh, severe dust bowl. So all of a sudden you're going to have s almost seven and a half thousand individuals from uh, Merced County in California and, and Los Angeles, Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles, right outside your doorsteps and outside the doorsteps. And they're going to bring money with them because uh, they're going to sell all they could and they're going to bring their money. We're talking 
Japanese American doctors, Japanese American nurses, Japanese American teachers, Jap- you know, professionals, as well as Japanese American farmers. The largest uh, rice growing farmer in the United States, in fact, he was called the rice king of the United States, Kadoda Farm, uh, will end up at Amachi. Loses his farm. And he comes, ends up at Amachi. He will come back. He will go back and start his farm again. And this, in fact, the family still grows a large amount of rice, sweet rice, long green rice for mochi in Southern California. But he'll end up here in Amachi as well. Uh, so anyway, they brought their money. Um, and uh, the city of Grenada... Are you kidding? They, they were ecstatic. The business were ecstatic because these Japanese Americans are going to shop. They're going to walk out of Amachi to come in with special passes. Um, these passes look like this. This is, an, uh, this is a historical pass. They would get a pass, a war relocation pass, and they would uh, take that. They would wear that on their person, and they could walk out, and they could shop at, at the uh, Grenada stores. Um, so these businesses are going to be, uh, do well coming out of the depression and coming out of the Dust Bowl and, uh, Baca County, as you know, was like the heart of the Dust Bowl. So Prowers County in this area wasn't far behind them. And these are the high rollers coming in. I don't know if you can see that, but gas back then was 17 cents too. I think that's kind of humorous. So anyway, Amachi is going to, uh, they're going to, it's a prefab situation. There is no insulation. Uh, the floor, the floors, many of them will be uh, brick lined floors. They'll put brick in them. But they're still going to be rushing to get those down, uh, dirt mostly. Um, and uh, they're going to, I, I mean, it's going to be quick. It's seven and a half thousand people. It's going to be the 10th largest concentration of people in the state of Colorado at the time. You're going to have eight guard towers around Amachi. Uh, this is what the barrack looks like. Uh, barracks looked like back then. This is in the 12H block. Um, <clears throat> this is our reconstructed barrack that we have at Amachi. We have several buildings that have been re- reconstructed uh, at Amachi. Guard towers, uh, eight of them. The, you can see here, no insulation. Uh, the cots that were they're going to come in at, and they're going to have one pot belly stove. Our the barrack, uh, our barrack will has a that same move in room. We have cots, wooden cots. We have the uh, pot belly stove, an original pot belly stove, and the brick is all lined in there. One light bulb in the middle of the room, and one pump up fire extinguisher is what everybody got. That's what they moved in with. They will quickly have to make uh, do with what they have, and they'll make homemade furniture. In fact, we just got a grant, a big grant, actually, to make homemade furniture. So we'll be making homemade furniture for the barracks and for the rec building that we actually just finished restoring as well. But you can see the uh, it was pretty bare. This is actually a staff quarters. That's not uh, in the Monte Barracks. But here's homemade furniture that they will end up eventually making and, and doing what they can to make it at home. All right, so the, uh, the hospital, 300-plus <clears throat> beds. You had Japanese-American doctors and Japanese-American nurses that ran the hospital. You had Japanese-American dentists, you name it. They did surgeries. They had x-ray machines. In fact, the x-ray machine, when Amachi closed, the x-ray machine will be taken to the Prowers County Hospital and used there for another 12 or 15 years. <clears throat> As a federal installation, they did have uh, some of the only penicillin in the whole valley area because it was a federal installation. Here's the Japanese American nurses as well. The MPs would check people, uh, classify people that were coming in and out. <clears throat> and uh, you had to sign in and out. Japanese Americans are going to do what they, you know, what they can do to make, um, make it a temporary home. Uh, this is origami flowers. They're going to do uh, artwork, which uh, is huge, uh, is filled in this museum everywhere. Artwork is, I mean, they just got tons of it. In fact, we just got some 
rare, rare art artwork. And, and if I have time, I'll show you here at the end of this presentation. This is the artwork, uh, woodworking artwork. And we've got probably 15 to 20 of these examples from Japanese Americans that made these during the, the time. High school, they played football. We have football, a football Amachi helmet here. Uh, the famous football game. They actually played Holly High School. Um, the, one of the players on Holly High School will be our our future governor, Governor um, uh, uh, Romer. <laughs> governor Romer will be uh, one of those uh, players on that team. Um, just so happens that the Amachi, they were both undefeated. The Amachi football team actually de uh, defeated Holly um, in that game, uh, seven to zero, and they and they won on a trick play, which um, <clears throat> I was told uh, what what that trick play was. But you you need to visit the museum because um, it's it wasn't supposed to be a trick play. And the way that they they told me, it's just not anything I should be broadcasting. It's kind of one of those personal things. This is a home ec class and uh, from the high school. These are high, uh, uh, junior high kids uh, recycling uh, Christmas cards and making Christmas cards. Graduation at Amachi. Usually a happy day for a lot of people, but, uh, you know, for those no-nos, like the individual that you saw that letter at the beginning of this presentation, they didn't get to graduate. Um, in fact, this teacher here and and the principal this is mr wathers is the principal and this is the teacher um a very well respected teacher her name was catherine odom um catherine stegner back then i knew we knew her as odom because we interviewed her i don't know how many times four or five times she lived in colorado springs uh she'll end up passing away at 100 years old and and from cancer from breast cancer actually um <clears throat> but she uh very well respected. We have a lot of her items from uh, from Amachi. And when we interviewed her, she was just outstanding teacher, and I, she has more dedication than I I could ever uh, dream to have. Um, but she actually will travel around the country for about a year and a half in a camper to uh, make sure her former Amachi students were actually settled everywhere, um, and uh, she's. She's known to have. Well, she went to she went to Chicago, inner city of Chicago. Um, and she had to get a cab a cab on the outskirts to get to get there, but the cab driver wouldn't even let her out until some of her students showed up. But anyway, long story short, she uh, her and uh, uh, Mr. Wathers here went to uh, some of the students were the no nos uh, were not going to be allowed to graduate, and they were put on a train in the town of Grenada and. These two individuals actually went to that train and pled with the MPs just to let the students out so they could graduate. They were unsuccessful, uh, and and those students were not allowed to graduate. Uh, she will actually track down her students that ended up having to go to um, to Japan um, <clears throat> and uh, kept up with them. And like I said, she wrote uh, personal reconnaissance to get uh, – a lot of her students into colleges and everything else. She was a senior history teacher and a senior advisor. Um, I can go on on how she ended up at Amachi because um, her first husband had passed away. And, and she was actually told she, they tracked CDE tracked her down in, in Washington. And she, she said, yeah, $1,200. That's a lot of money. I'll be right back at 1200 a year, mind you. And uh, some of the teachers in our area, in our area here were not, not happy with the Amachi teachers because they thought they were well overpaid for $1,200 a year. And she had to get on an army truck in the back of an army truck back and forth from Lamar to here. And she said, no more. Either I live at Amachi or I leave. And so they gave her a, a, a staff quarters at Amachi and she made a lot of friends with Japanese Americans. So that's when we were interviewing her. She would just show us uh, stacks and stacks of unopened Christmas presents from her students. She just got tired of opening them every year. So it's very, very well revered. In fact, when she passed away, her son Jack, who is in uh, lives in uh, Fort Collins, actually uh, they do codons when Japanese Americans die, and uh, <clears throat> they they all the codons, which is they send money. The codons uh, came to us, the uh, Machi Preservation Society. We ended up with about uh, 
gosh, twelve thousand dollars, I think. Anyway, long story short, the uh, Japanese American uh, when the Machi was opened up, uh, they lost. The, the, they took it from local farmers. Uh, this is the only only of the confinement centers that was left from local farmers, taken from local farmers by intimate domain. That's another uniqueness about Amachi. And uh, ended up with about 10,000 acres away from uh, local farmers. And then when the camp closed, they didn't sell it back to the original owner. They sold it to the highest bidder. Again, that, that causes major problems. Anyway, they are going to grow vegetables and some vegetables like celery and habaca tea plant that they uh, local farmers said no way, and they still did. And this is a melon harvest in the background. You can see how big the Amachi camp is as well. Uh, we found the Amachi water tower, water tank, uh, 22 miles south of here on a ranch. That's what it looked like. This is uh, fully restored and on the original foundation when we got it back, we got it fully restored. Now, 442 and the 100 Battalion, so this is the smallest of all 10, 10 of the confinement centers, yet it had the largest volunteerism to the military. And we're, we are building a historical kiosk that they had back then uh, for Amachi. We're, we're about done with it now. We just got to put the names on there. We got to put a thousand names, seven and a half thousand people, a thousand men and women are going to volunteer to fight for the United States military in the 442 in the 100th Battalion, and in the MIS, Military Intelligence Services. Many of these Japanese Americans will end up, from Amachi, will end up in the Pacific Theater helping the, uh, our, our, our soldiers. One individual will actually parachute with his men in the MIS, parachute behind enemy lines in southern China as the war was ending to free the last of the Doolittle Raiders. Uh, 31 men, several brothers, sets of brothers, will die fighting for the United States, and we have a monument for those 31 men uh, in the United States that died for fighting for the United States and died from Amachi. Um, and this individual, Kiyoshi Nirmaga, is actually a Medal of Honor recipient from Amachi. So outside of our museum, we have a mural for him. And on the monument, we have the congressional, I mean, not the, yeah, this, the Medal of Honor be, uh, behind his name. And we will denote, denote his uh, Medal of Honor on our kiosk when we get that one done as well. So uh, the most decorated unit in World War II, uh, 442. Many, many engagements. Um, I, my computer is starting to lose power, so I've got to move quickly. Uh, funeral for some of the Japanese Americans in the uh, Amachi gym. And uh, I think that was for like seven or eight of them of the uh, individuals in this in this particular uh, photo. Hamachi will close on the 10th in the 10th month October of 1945 October 15th so it closed on 10 15 at the 15th hour exactly so October 15th uh, at 3 p.m. exactly is when it closed. These flags we uh, have individual Japanese American uh, whose father was in Hamachi he shows up and he puts these flags up. He raises and lowers these flags as quickly as he can around our monument at the cemetery, at the Amachi Cemetery, as fast as he can, up and down. And then we sell those to, to raise money Those and uh, they, that, that they flew over the monument uh, at, a certain, at, the, at exactly 3 o'clock at the closing. This is the Amachi laundry that's on our campus that we use as a, as a bus barn. So a lot, when the, when the camp closed, when Amachi closed, uh, a lot of these buildings were sold off. This is uh, Amachi staff quarters. That's where staff members would have uh, lived. In fact, we're getting we're remodeling that one. To, that's going to become our new Amachi Research Center, and people will be able to stay there for free and, and do research for Amachi. This is what Amachi looks like today. Um, lots of signages. We have... 60 some signs all over Amachi and new ones too with the National Park Service signs with our, with our, um, you name it, um, our driving tour, I'm sorry. So we are constantly, these high school students were constantly trimming trees, working on roads, mowing. This is archaeology. Uh, we don't always use shovels, obviously, but. <laughs> Um, we're, we're actually, we restored a Kia, um, a koi pond 
This is what the koi pond looked like in the 1940s. This is what you know, it was done. It was immaculate, but a lot of it was still there. Yeah. So that's what it looked like when they did it in the 1940s. This is what it kind of looks like today because of the rattlesnake uh, prop population. And every winter we have to go out there and redo it. This is the original Amachi water tank. This is where our water still comes from today. That's what the cemetery used to look like before the Denver Optimus Club gave us some uh, funds and some help. Uh, we have lots of uh, Amachi pilgrimages. Unfortunately, we have to do them by virtual uh, for the last couple of years, including this one. This is our K through 12 high school uh, uh, building, school building, uh, restoring the Amachi Cemetery, including my students um, uh, rolling out the sod. Uh, third graders did that. This is my group. We redid the uh, memorial at at uh, at Amachi. This is the memorial building at the cemetery. We redid the roof. Um, <clears throat> lucky I was a roofer before I became a teacher. That's what we. That's how it came out at the end. And that's the memorial building. That's what's inside the memorial building. But, uh, it's a monument for the Japanese Americans that died at Amachi. And man, I'm losing power as fast as I can. Do it. I must be because I'm streaming. Anyway, long story short, um, that's in Washington, D.C. Uh, Christy Yamaguchi's mom and parents, grandparents were at Amachi. Pat Suzuki, Broadway actress, still alive, lives in New York at Amachi. She's good friends with uh, George Takei. These are my students that go to Japan. We go to Japan uh, every other year and we do presentations. And in Japan, and uh, these are all my students in Japan um, having fun without me. And that's it for the slideshow. If you, um, um, and that's it. Um, unfortunately, I'm just running out of. I'm running out of power. I'm down to like 13%. I apologize. Thank, thank you so much, John. That was an amazing presentation. Um, I wanted to know just a few things. Um, in listening, um, do you hope to continue your uh, your trips abroad uh, with your students? Yes. Do you, do you feel that will be happening this year? No, they've already canceled that. Okay. That that, that was canceled. So, mm -hmm. so in twenty twenty two, you hope to continue that that yep. tradition. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yep. Um, and that is that open to only students at Grenada? No. High school. That trip, no. Uh, we we go. To, it's a it's a great program, uh, and uh, uh, this is for everybody in the state of Colorado, people in Pueblo, everywhere. Um, there is a summit. It's the uh, Whitman Manjaro Summit, and it's one year the Japanese Americans come here, one year the American uh, we go there. Okay, uh, sometimes we host them, and then they host us. We will stay in five-star hotels for three days, but then most of the time we're with host parents so that we can learn their culture. It's to learn their culture. And then they take us to schools and, and other places, and then we uh, we do presentations at high schools and colleges as well, so in Japan. And we do presentations all over the state, not, not, not with COVID, but we've gone as far as Topeka, Kansas. We go anywhere we want. We go everywhere, and we don't charge. We never charge. That's, that's an agreement we have with Japanese Americans. We do not charge to do these presentations, that's so we go we go to Japan and do presentations for free. So that's amazing. That's an amazing experience for the students as well yeah. to have that kind of exchange with uh, the Japanese culture and to really absorb it. Um, I hope that that will continue for your students. Um, again, your website is www.amachi.org. Right and. Um, I'm sure we'll be getting a lot of uh, questions, comments uh, during this program, and um, uh, they can be directed toward the website or to your email um, yeah. to answer those. Um, before we go, is uh, is there one or two pieces of artwork that you'd like to share with the viewers? Oh, man, yeah, and I've got a ton of it. I'll be honest with you, but we just got this, and and the. the the, the granddaughter that gave us these understand um, she lives in she lives in Africa now she works at game preserve which I think is is amazing in itself um, but this individual here was never really trained in art and um, 
he's actually painting this artwork and take, they took a picture of him painting it. This is the painting that he was doing. Now, the, the, the strange thing up until about a year ago, he was an unknown artist. Now we have all his art. There's his portfolio after portfolio. Portfolio. That's our train station, by the way. Portfolio. He, 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 he drew here, but he never drew it. When he left here, he went to be back. He went back to California and never drew again. This is the only time. And uh, he's in the book we call it the book of the art of uh, Gaman, which has all the artwork of all the all the camps. And he's actually in this book as an unknown artist. Well, he's not unknown anymore. We have his passports. We have everything on him. And so that's artwork there. Um, man, I'll just show you. Ah, I'll show you around the museum for before my battery dies. If my battery dies, I apologize. Hey. <laughs> Well, I mean, we okay. have yeah, we have military uniforms. We have uh, this is a model of this is a, a model of my students did of a Machi scale model, exactly one ten scale model. Uh, it had the largest silk screen. It had the only silk screen shop in the, in the United States. I mean, in wow. the Midwest. Yep. Luggage, the actual luggage, their names. Um. There's a Machi there. What is, oh, here's the artwork. Here's some good artwork right here. So that's artwork there. And then uh, there's Pat Suzuki with her albums. Great Broadway actress and uh, singer. We actually have, it's really cool. We just got this in too. We have her class, Will. And she must have known that she was going to be a Broadway actress. She must have known prophecies, class prophecies. And she's in here and she, she sounds just like she was going to be a, a Broadway actress. But uh, so anyway, we have tons, as you can see, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, this is our mock room at our museum for the uh, what a room would have looked like with the cot. Homemade furniture, that's all homemade furniture in there. That's an original uh, uh, potbelly stove. That's a homemade crib. We just got that uh, about a month and a half ago. This is a homemade crib that was made in Amachi by the dad. The quilt was made in Amachi, uh, homemade furniture. This is original brick, Amachi brick. This is what the brick would have looked like because that is the brick. Uh, you name it, we've got it. So, tons of artwork up there on the walls there, silk screen. Uh, these are silk screen posters. The silk screen, uh, they made uh, posters for the U.S. military, over 250,000 posters for the U.S. military from the silk screen shop here in Amachi. We had three, uh, three uh, um, Walt Disney cartoonists. Uh, Chris Ishii is the one that will make. Uh, Chris Ishii will make the Little Nebo, which is a cartoon character. That's a cartoon character. And uh, that is the Little Nebo, and that's Chris Ishii's work. So he's... All right, well. Thank you so much for sharing the museum. That was kind of an unexpected pleasure. Well, so uh, just more encouragement for you to visit. Uh, the Machi Preservation Society the, the, uh, the, in uh, Grenada, Colorado. And uh, feel free to email or uh, go onto the website and contact John Hopper um, with any questions or comments or perhaps information that you may have about uh, any Machi residents or their descendants. John, thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, we appreciate yep. you. And uh, we really appreciate the work that you're doing and uh, making this enduring. You bet. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay.